this is Jeremiah for the last segment on April Matrix. Jeremiah Michael Pearson is here at YouTube or um, or on Rumble or on my own channel. I'm going to um, start my own website probably here this year. I hope to. Now let's let's get into this as we greet you in only one name, Jesus. That's all you need. You don't go into anything else. Uh, I, no, I suggest that you just leave that as your name of God and so forth. Um, because that's what the Bible says. Do everything in that name. Everything means like everything. A new agreement available for 2,000 years that you can get back to the fear of the Lord, that you can get back to loving God again. If you hear the evangelist like Jeremiah here and you yield to the planting and watering, which is the perfecting, uh, which is offered in the covenant, and we found we find all that criteria of yielding and, and, and being wise and listening to the evangelist and listen to the simple uh, procedures that are here in, in your Bible and, and agree, to the, agree to the fact that you are going to listen to Mr. Austere Jesus Christ and Mr. Kind Jesus Christ. And you're going to agree to all of this. Uh, you're going to call on the name of the Lord. You're going to agree. And who, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And we go to the simple things here, and you're going to agree to allow this light, which is number 12 in this ministry, you're going to allow light into your life, and you're going to agree with Moses, Moses, my servant. That's what you're going to be here. You're going to be a servant. The word servant is probably the most important word in the Bible. It basically means that you were told to do something, and you did it. Moses was told to free the people. He had an option to party and ignore what God told him to do. They had big parties there in, in Egypt. The Bible says that Moses thought about the parties. But he ate living bread. The bread of humiliation. And then the Lord, through his love perfecting, he allowed Moses to be humiliated. God told Moses, I humiliated you. Christianity is basically a proposition and a covenant agreement in the sound doctrine of Jesus Christ that you're going to eat humiliation. And that's called living bread, essentially, is what it is. It's a 2,000-year-old opportunity to eat living bread, which is a basic, basically the bread of humiliation, and it's based upon the, the teachings that I just gave you, which are the cross, the yoke, the stone, the berry, the cup, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the birthing of John 16. Uh, you want to keep going. So if, if there's, there's quite a few references to what actually living bread is and, and, and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and of course we're going to get into it right now uh, some very very specific uh, pertaining to living bread okay and then we talked about how it's wise you're, you're really being a very wise person by selecting the exchange that the master said you can exchange Moses exchanged the party and the linen for dirty people and getting out in the mud he could, have, he could have partied with the, with, the, with the Egyptians who worship animals, women flying across the room like Catholics do, which is, that's why it's called Babylon, Catholicism and so forth. Because they, you don't know what they're going to do in that building. They'll worship an animal, they'll kneel before a woman, there's a statue of a man, and they'll kiss his boots or something, and then, then they'll go up to a candle, uh, 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 you know, candle area, and, and they'll light a candle, and, and, and then the priest will tell them, since you lit a candle, you get a husband. That's all confusion, and it's not biblical, and thank God for Protestant teaching, and red letters that my parents showed me here, which is, I don't have to deal with anything that is confusion. Babylon means confusion. What I'm teaching you right now will take you out of confusion. I don't have any enigmas. Now, let's get to covenant, sound doctrine, living bread, wisdom. Now, when you put confidence in what I just said, that means that you're faithful, and that makes you a winner in this whole a scheme of things. Faith is putting confidence in in what we just talked about, living bread. Commandments are living bread. If you eat this bread, you, you don't have to tell me that you believe in God if you believe in the commandments. Uh, 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 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And by it, men gained approval. You're going to gain approval by putting confidence in humiliation. And walking around the altar and having the altar burn everything out of you uncomfortably. That's what the altar is for. You walk around the altar. That's perfecting. Uh, Paul, John says beautifully, perfected by love. Love is perfecting you. And you're learning to put confidence in reality. When Adam and Eve fell, they put confidence in lies. Jesus comes back to Adam and says, Hey, Adam, I'm knocking on your door. How would you like to believe in reality again and, and get back to the fear of, fear of the Lord and the respect of God? You lost respect for God, and I'm going to give you another opportunity to respect God again. This time, listen and do what you're told. You're told to repent and be baptized and eat living bread. Are you going to do it and be wise? Let's find out. I'm going to coerce you, guide you. Jesus said, I, I, I wanted to take in people the, the way a hen takes in her chickies, but they wouldn't be taken in. You can take chickies in as a hen, a mother hen, and they, 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 they won't come in. They'll take off. That's called the wise and the unwise. Now Mary was taken in. Her auntie, Elizabeth, was taken in. Her husband was taken in. Zechariah eventually, eventually was taken in. John the Baptist was taken in. A lot of people were taken in to this opportunity. Three wise men came to visit. They were taken in. They received the mercy of God and they submitted themselves to the, the narrow brick road that each one of them had to take. Ordained by God. Let's get to some specifics. Matthew 10. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So, so if you meet somebody and they don't prioritize you, are they worth it for you? Is it, are they worth your time? Somebody comes in my house and, 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 and they say they like me and they start destroying my house and then 10 minutes later they say they like me and then they start destroying my house again and then they say they like me and then they tear, they burn the house down. Uh, I don't want them around the house. They're not worth my time. God is looking for people who are serious about loving him and that's what he's saying here. You can't love everything else but me and be worthy of me. It's not going to work because I'm a real lover. That's what the master's saying here. This is what, by the way, in Matthew 10, and we're going to go to Mark 8, it's the same, it's the same reference. The master is telling you that he, he it's all or nothing at all. That, that's the point. You, you, as an adult, and I'll speak to some of you teenagers and adults here, if you're going out dating with someone and you're a Christian person and you're a wise person, do you want to have somebody hang around you that, that, that they're going to send you on some sort of broken heart uh, trip? If, if you have half a brain, you don't want someone playing with your heart and throwing your heart around all over the place. They had a nice song here in America, uh, Stop Dragging My Heart Around. God is love, and he's telling you that right here, that, that, that I want serious people who are willing to get down and dirty, and, and, and I don't want a bunch of gold bricks who are lazy and selfish really hanging around. Now, if you're open to, to, to being developed, into a loving person, and you're open to the, the perfecting by love and, and, and to the potter's wheel of life, where, where, where you grow and you agree to grow in, in humility, then, 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 then we have groundwork. We can make a covenant because we're on the same ground. You can't make a, an agreement with somebody who's not on your ground. Why would God make an agreement with somebody who's not love and he's love? It doesn't make any sense. 
That's what the master is saying here. For the first time the master is giving you, he's for, in, for 10 chapters in, in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we've got, we, we, it took us 10 chapters for him to tell you straight up, as they say, really who he is and, and, and the bottom line of Christianity. You have to go 10 chapters and go 37 verses before he said, I'm love, and, and that's what this is all about. If you love everybody around me except for me and, and Joe and Frank and the car and the dog, and you don't, have, you don't prioritize me, then there's no soap. Because this is the first time we really face living bread. Now, the master does something really wonderful in Mark 8. And let's go there in a minute. Whereby what he does is he, he takes this concept of love is service. Love is serious. Love's going to work. I'm not going to keep track of your work and say that your work saves you. I've done work for the Lord Jesus Christ, but it doesn't save me at all. That's what we teach in Protestantism. That's why a lot of people don't like us. Because they want to find something to be proud of. And we teach them that they can't be proud, and that makes them angry. You can't brag about anything, Mr. Joseph over there. Mr. Frank. A lot of them are going to leave. John said they left us because they were not of us. One of the reasons why they walked through was because we told them that we're Protestants and you can't brag about squat. Nothing. So they march out of here. That's what they do. That's why Jesus told the disciples, will you also leave? Meaning the disciples aren't, aren't Calvinistically permanently saved because he asked them, do you want to leave? Does it sound like he's being a boa constrictor to, to once saved, always saved to the disciples, which thousands of Calvinists believe and still do uh, across these mesas here on the earth? It's acute mental retardation for you to read your Bible and to come away with the conclusion that God's going to force you to be saved. It's utter nonsense. He, he clearly told the disciples, will you leave also? He was giving them the opportunity to split That means you're gone. Because sometimes the master will teach the disciples, then he'll give a teaching for the disciples and the people who aren't saved. He did that in eight. Now here, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure who exactly is getting this message. I think it's the disciples only, pertaining to what is love here. And, and love is, taketh not up his cross. That's what love is. Love is putting on a mind of service and denial and keeping that mind every morning where you open to difficulties for the master's purposes. Now we're going to move on because I've hammered this point home uh, all, pretty much all year and we're going to move on. But it, it is the cornerstone of everything here. And if you add deity and the understanding and the comprehension that, that you must understand that he is almighty God and you must worship the son even as you worship the father, then we're on our way. We can move on here. We, we, we've covered a lot of the, the basics. Not everything, but we've covered just about everything. We're going to move on now. We're going to get to hope and agape, and we're going to talk about how the Lord talks to two different groups of people, sometimes at one time, how the conversation is applicable to both groups. This appears to be geared towards the disciples only. And he gives you the criteria of loving him, which is a daily cross, which is hating your life. He that hateth his life, he that findeth his life. So I teach hate your life in the context of what it means. And what it means is you're open to the sacrifice of anything for the, for, the, for the furtherance of the gospel and people getting saved and people's hearts being mended and their minds being set free by your denial. It's very simple. Let's move on now. And, and some, of you, some of you are going to resist this, and I have nothing to do with that. You just can't put confidence in what I'm telling you, and, and you're not going to have saving faith. I'm, I'm giving you what saving faith is. 
You can believe God exists, exists, and he gives people a trip to Disneyland. That doesn't save you. He gives you food. You can thank him for it and go your merry way and play pick a part. That's what the young rich ruler did right here in the text for it right here. The young rich ruler. He thought he could play pick a part. You know, Jesus Christ, I took care of my mother. And, and the Lord was obviously pleased with that. But why wouldn't he? But then the Lord told him, you need to do this. You need, you need to give all your money to the poor and be broke until you go to heaven. He, he ran off because he wanted to play pick a part. You can't play pick a part. You can't say I took care of my mother and I can commit adultery. You can't say I don't commit adultery and I don't uh, give to the poor. You, you, can't, you can't pick stuff. You'll find yourself in trouble. That's why God told Moses, and he's telling you two and me, you must live by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. You can't pick, God's going to give humans food. Let's rejoice that God gave us food and think you're hunky-dory. God gave me Disneyland and a trip to Alaska with a, with a pudding-eating TV guy or something, and, and, and we're all saved. No, you got to get to what we're, Jeremiah just got into here, and we're, we're, we're going to move on, which is living bread. And you have to be wise to take the living bread, and you have to put confidence that it's worth it for you to eat the living bread, which is basically humiliation. And, and then if you add the love of mercy and forgiveness, and, and then you add, I want to live holy, to all of this, then we have a sure winner on our hands. Done deal. You see how important it is to go through this matrix of, I made an agreement, I found out the criteria, what's the, the main criteria? Uh, what is wisdom? Uh, wisdom is selecting the designated soul food. Don't push it off your table. The Bible says that the Hebrews found Jesus as a table of offense. God put on their table the Son of God coming in a human body, and they rejected the whole notion. We're not going to believe that God would come into a human body and base our relationship with him on grace and mercy. No, Moses said we must obey the law, and that's how you get a relationship with God, by getting, be, being a very perfect person. That's called, uh, wrong answer. Can't be saved under, under the new covenant terms. Now, I, I'm here to teach confidence in what I just told you. And your chief confidence, of course, is the blessed hope. That's your real intense expectation because as a Christian, you have a lot of expectations that you don't necessarily understand. And the one that you should have the most intensity for is being with the one you love, and that's called the blessed hope or the prime confidence that you have, that you should have. Paul calls it your chief crown of rejoicing to the Thessalonians, which means you, you, I'm happy about a lot of things. Tomorrow I'll probably have a good day tomorrow, and the car will run, and I'm expecting God to, to take care of me and take care of my car and safety and so forth. That's called faith. However, my chief confident expectation is to get out of here in the rapture. That's my intense expectation. Why? Because that, because that deals with having love as the core. You're going to be with high love face to face. That's why it's an intense expectation. You understand that? Out of all the things you believe in the Christian faith, which has a lot of things to be confident in. I'm not going to go into right now, such as confident in tomorrow, confident that you're going to be loved in five minutes. There's a lot of things that we're confident in, that God's strong, that God can heal you, and all that. Oh, and, and you don't have any problem with any of that when you love the Lord. You don't have any problem with any confidence. That's why there are so many faith books at the libraries and, and the Christian bookstores, because people, they're not loving God. So they have to keep bolstering up their faith all the time. Doggone it, I'm not that confident in God. Well, the reason you're not is because you don't love God. Love always has confidence. That's why we try to perfect love here. We're, we're into love perfecting, as John said. Love perfecting has faith growth. 
automatically. Now you can identify that faith, and that's what we're doing right now. Just because we're love perfecting doesn't mean we don't identify faith. No, no, no. These three abide. Faith, hope, and love. Love, you don't need confidence in. You own it. Now you need confidence that you're going to have love tomorrow, necessarily, but if you have love in your heart right now, you, you don't have to have faith in love. Faith is something that you believe in that you don't have. That you're hoping to get from a Christian perspective of the word pistis in Greek. I'm not going to go over different kinds of faith right now. But I want to touch on hope. Let, let's go to Mark and look at the, the, the different reference to the same reference, okay? Let's go to... Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his, his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose their life, his life, for my sake and the gospel's, uh, the same shall find his life. So this is very simple grammar. I've had fifth graders who can soak this up. This is not difficult when we compare this one with the, it's the same reference in 10, Matthew and Mark 8. Except it's very significant in this particular reference that he says he called everyone, the disciples and the followers, because he's being followed by two people. People who made a commitment and looky-loos. Both of them. When people come over to my house, there are people who come over here who made a commitment, and then there are people who come over here who are looky-loos about Christianity. I went to a church, but I'm a looky-loo. Okay, well, that's fine. That's better than not going to church at all. Um, but, you know, you haven't eaten living bread, have you? Uh, I, I did eat living bread. Did you really? Did you eat the reference here? This is your first main reference to living bread uh, in the Gospels uh, chronologically in Mark 8 and in Matthew 10. Everything is leading up to he that loveth me. I'm telling he that loveth. You can stop right there. Your Gospel starts and ends right there. And you can go to John 14, and it's the same thing. If you love me, you will do this. That's always top-of-the-line stuff. If you say you're healed and you got healed, that's not top-of-the-line. The guys on TV might talk about that as being the head issue, you know. I got healed and so forth. That's not the head issue in Christianity. It's very important, and you can be saved by it. That's not my point. The point is, is that you can be healed and not saved. But if you go here, if you love, he that loveth, then that's the bottom line criteria. Which goes back to, he that hateth his life shall find his life, which is the same reference here in Matthew 10, which is the same thing as take up your cross daily. Because if you lose your life, and you, that means you love him, and that means that you own your life, and that means you're going along with what? The agreement of the covenant, which has the criteria in, in, in your sound doctrine, which, which is germane to this right here. There are other aspects to sound doctrine, but we're focusing on the big issue right now. Sound doctrine could be my science lesson I showed you. Sound doctrine can be talking about the future of the beast, which is very popular online. A sound doctrine can be looking at the animal that, that Daniel describes and talking about the different kingdoms of Persia and, you know, and the Romans. And Okay, there's a lot of doctrine. But it's not necessarily what, Jeremiah? The living bread that came down from heaven, that if any man eat this bread, he'll never die. What, what we're talking about here is you can just focus on this for the rest of your life and you'll live forever. You don't have to go to David and Goliath. It's a wonderful story of Jonah or, or you know, or all, all the wonderful stories in the Bible. But when you get to Deuteronomy where God tells Moses, I humiliated you that you may know that man shall not live by bread alone, that's heavy stuff because that's related to sound doctrine. 
That's related to the commandments that came down to heaven, which was Moses was confronted with humiliation and to allow love to perfect him. And what he did was he allowed agape perfecting. He, he laid down his life for the brethren, uh, which are Hebrews, which are dirty people who have, who have regular clothing. They wear Levi's and they don't wear silk and, and, and party like the Egyptians were doing. And he had to make a decision. And he used the same quotation that basically was given to Moses that he gave to the devil in the wilderness. Because nothing really changes when it comes to salvation. A person has to make a choice as a child of Adam. They have to make a decision. What will a man exchange for his own soul? Moses thought about exchanging uh, salvation and pleasing God for being a party person in Egypt. But the Bible says he thought about it and made the right decision. He chose to drink the same cup that John's mother drank. What must my boys do to be really in high in heaven? Okay, here's the, here, here's the criteria for your boys to be high in heaven. You have to drink the same cup I'm going to drink. You want a guarantee? Can you eat living bread uh, straight up? Can you eat fallen stone? Can you eat take up your cross daily? Can you eat uh, exchanging parties for denial. Can you eat this and can you do this and can you drink this? And that's all we're doing over and over again. And I, I'm going to stop right here because I wanted to point out one thing more that, 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 that the master is saying here that as he called, he said, and he spake that saying openly. And, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also. That's huge. And I'm going to close with that. What, what, this, this, is really, this is really a big deal because what he's doing is, is he's giving criteria for salvation to people who are not saved. And he's giving criteria for salvation for people who are supposedly saved. Why would he do that? If the disciples are already saved and they, if they've obviously repented, they're disciples, meaning they've gone through a disciplinary initiation and they've confessed their sins and they've been to the water and they've been baptized and they've been immersed in the water, which means I'm going to give my life away and die to the world. That's what you do when you get buried in the water. You're telling God, send me out. Where, where do you want me to go? I'm essentially dead right now. I have no fortune in glory at all. I'm not Indy Jones, Indiana Jones. I, I don't have any more fortune in glory at all. So he's telling people who've already been saved, in this ministry I call this number 42 on our yearly matrix here, which is Christianity is basically two periods, and the Lord will address both of them. Now, th these guys who have, who have been initiated and illuminated, they're not necessarily saved that's the point. It's very clear to see in simple grammar because he's telling them that they are also going to have to take up their cross and deny themselves. Well, I thought they already took up their cross. The master says, I've already washed your feet and you're cleansed. Why give me this endure to the end and you shall be saved? That adds a new dynamic to the doctrine. That's why I call this in the ministry number 42, which is there are two periods for Christianity to have success. There's, a, there's, a, there's the initial illumination, and then there's post-illumination, where there has to be success on both grounds. And it's, it's clear to see also in the parable of the sower. Because we have two gentlemen who are ashamed after being illuminated and offended. Just like he says here, whosoever shall be ashamed. Let, let's, let's read that. Whosoever therefore, therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words. Okay, stop right there. 
Let's, let's, let's go down further. Also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory. What you need to do as a human being and a child of Adam, I'm going to close, is you need to put on the same mindset that he had, which is Christian, the Christian, Christ-like, which is you're going to not be ashamed that Father giving you some difficult tasks to lay down your life for the brethren. It's the same thing over and over again. And I'm done. And I've talked to people, I've seen them right in my face, they go, I'm ashamed of that. I'm ashamed of you telling me that I must take up a cross. I'm ashamed and, I, uh, and I'm offended. Get back, get away, get back. Okay, that's very unfortunate and it's very sad because they're going to die. Trying to play pick apart with the commandments of Jesus Christ and, and taking the body of the letter and, and, the, and, 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 the, and the, 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 the actual heartbeat of living bread, the actual meat and, meat and potatoes of vitamins that you need for your soul and pushing them off the table and telling me you want candy. Instead of manning up and womaning up like uh, the, the disciples are, and Mrs. Ebony is one of the first ones to man up the woman, John's mother. She knew what he was saying. You're telling me that I have some difficulties ahead of me, and, and can I do it in order for me to get the prize of uh, being in the kingdom? And, she, and she's saying, bring it on. Can do. I will exchange whatever it is uh, for getting in the kingdom, and that goes for my boys too. I want my boys to not miss out on the kingdom. Because we're, 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 we're Israelites in, in Jerusalem right now, and we're all under these, these, these Romans, and they're ordering us around, and they're beating on us, and they're making fun of us, and they're, you know, you know we're just getting beat up. I like the idea of the new kingdom. What are we going to do here? I'm going to shut down. Maranatha. We'll, we'll come back later. Maranatha. Jesus is coming again.